not another sugar bush video one wild crafter it is similar but different to other videos this spring um i'll show you what we're up to we're just getting to the end of end of the season this might be the last or second last day um so again i'm doing birch sap on the front pans this is the finishing pan the syrup uh, the sap pan at the back, and then I've got fresh sap that's going to be coming into my float valve. This will probably be the end of the season, but not the end of One Wild Crafter videos. Probably going to cut a little bit more firewood, and we're going to do a product test. Um, so what I have here is the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10, which... Um, Initially, when they approached me, I thought uh, I might not really ever use that, but then I got to thinking about it and um, I decided I definitely could use that. Moose meat. We are going to do moose meat cooked in maple sap and we're going to do some temperature checks. We're going to check this out. This is supposed to be one of the fastest uh, instant read thermometers. In addition to that, it's got a backlight, it's highly accurate, uh, gets very fast readings, it has a super long battery life, I think 3,000 hours. So I'm thinking, for me, like I'll use this in the kitchen, but it's also going to be great to uh, carry around because it's pretty lightweight. I throw that in my pack with my cooking stuff and um, it just travels with me and then if I'm cooking bear meat or other things, uh, I can do my temperature checks on them and then I don't have to overcook them in order to, to feel safe about parasites and things like that. Um, it's also waterproof, so that's handy. And we're going to try it out on some, uh, some liquid temperature readings. So we'll see how hot this sap's getting at the front, the birch sap. And then I want to check um, the temperature of my syrup against this uh, analog thermometer so I, th I think that's gonna be pretty cool I don't, maybe it even does air temperatures which would be awesome because when I'm camping um, and I'm curious about the temperature maybe I can just do air temperature checks with it so let's try that today too and I'll show you what's hiding in the little secret spring pond over here so there, I think if you've been watching these videos, you know that there used to be a homestead back in the woods here. And they hand dug and lined with rocks um, this little well. Let's check the temperature on this also, because I'm pretty sure it's cooler than the air and I'm cooling some drinks in there. Those are only for after the chainsaw work is done though. Oh, I haven't, haven't seen very many yet this season. That's cool. Do you want to go film it? Uh, I'll show you where it was. Okay. Are you going to film? This yeah. Stuff? Pour it in. There's a lot of sap. Awesome. And it's nice clear sap too. I was worried that it wouldn't be, but it's clear and it's sweet. I'm getting a season extension here right now. Filter, filter. So over here, when it got, when we had our warm spell. Are you talking to me or the camera? Oh, the camera. Uh -oh. I could talk to you too. During the warm spell, the sap went bad, but I set it aside because you can put it in your pans and the fermenting bad sap yeah. will clean all of your okay. scum off. Let's actually put the solar panel oops, into the sunshine. These, um, these are great if you want a little bit of emergency or backwoods power for a little campsite. Um, there's just like a little uh, charge controller here. Right now I've got it on a 40 watt panel, but I um, originally got this charge controller. It came with a 100 watt panel. And you can charge all of your USB devices on it. So that's handy. And then uh, I'm just charging up that little ATV battery and I'm using an RV 12 volt pump to move filtered sap up into my gravity tank 
so that it can flow into the evaporator. Well, let's do a little seat of the pants unboxing here. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping this actually shipped with a battery. Otherwise, all my plans will have been foiled because of my own poor planning. That is light. Do not touch any fire or any object with a temperature over 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, chef's temp. I will stay away from things that are more than 300 degrees Celsius. Holding. And open, open to power on. Oh, look at that. You just open it and it powers on and it says that it is 59 i guess the air temperature is a little bit variable uh, and i don't even know if it's meant to do air temperature i might just be making that up but let's try it on some other things um hold it unhold it <gasps> turns off so here's a feature about this. You open it to use it and then it's got like 260 degrees of uh, range. So even lefties can use it. Righties can use it. Um, it does have the display just on the one side. But uh, that's handy. You could um, have it on a lanyard. That would be handy for camping. It's uh, small enough to fit in a pocket and it is very light. You made it back. Where's the boss? Hey, where's your mama? There she is. Hauling sap like a champ. They're either three quarters full or empty. Yeah. So some of them have dried up, but some of them are just giving her. Yeah. And how does the sap look? Is it nice and I clean? I thought some it was cloudy. Okay, good call. Um, and I think some cloudy stuff might have gotten this. Okay, that's okay. We're going to filter it. There's always bugs at this time of year too. Maybe nobody wants to see that, but... And there's like, I didn't get those, the closest ones. There's like seven more. Okay. Awesome. There aren't any past the mail bucket, right? Like there's a couple, but... There's uh, on the right hand side, there's like six. Yeah, I got those. And there's the twins. Yeah. And then there's the ones on the left. Okay. I didn't miss any. Do you want me to carry one of those? No, it's easier. With two? Yeah. Thanks. The mail bucket is a bucket hanging in a tree to hide prezzies in. <laughs> how fun is that? Look at how much the firewood pile grew. I got some more to split here too. That's such a waste of energy. Yeah, if you walk too far. Tara's gonna come with me to do the test. Look, she hasn't even seen it yet. What is it? It's that thermometer. Oh. The, the temperature, the quick read. Oh. Chef's Temp X10. I can't see the screen, it's too bright. Uh, it's not on oh. yet. Also, not on yet. Yeah. But it, um, so if you, if you open the needle, watch the screen as you open it. So you pull it out to use it and ta -da! Ah, I see it just it. turns on. Even in the bright sunshine. Yeah. That's handy, eh? Yeah. It's Can trying you to switch get it to Celsius? Yes. But I guess you wouldn't for food, because... Uh, it depends on what you're familiar with, I guess. Well, all the menu, or all the recipes are in Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and for, like, when you're checking internal meat temperatures, I guess it depends on if you're working in Fahrenheit or... So, do you want to open it up and get a read on the water? Oh, I didn't put my drinks in here. Um, because I was selfish. <laughs> I was so selfish, Tara. So Just put the needle in. But it's going to be upside down. That's okay. I'll oh, turn. it's not upside down. Oh, it flipped. What? That isn't a, it's got a, a dynamo inside of it. What do you call that when it's got a little thing that tells you? A gravitron? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. 44 Wait, Fahrenheit. Let me go deeper and see. It's actually waterproof. I think you could dunk it. Are you sure? It's supposed to be fine. It says on the box. Uh, you want me to do it? Sure, do it. Oops, you dropped it in. <laughs> and it's still yeah. still reading. It's got to have some water. 43. Mmm, those will cool down then nicely. Yeah. Here is a... These are some of the first mushrooms of the season. And these are called... 
I need Stevie Fun for here. Red Elven Cups. Red Velvet? Red Velvet Elven Saddle? Ah! I'll have to just <laughs> pop up a word balloon that is smarter than my off the cuff ID. And it grows it in a cup like that? Yep. Cool. I mean, obviously it does. Yeah. You'll probably spot more of them now that you've seen this one. Yeah. Like, like literally right there, there's another one. But they're not. Hey, buddy. Like they're edible. Eat, they are edible? Yeah, you can eat them. I'm testing out a uh, chef's temp. It is a quick read. So I'm talking to my sister here right now. I'm going to try and do this one handed. So I'm going to open that. And then put that in there. Oh, yeah, it's getting hot. 197.9 Fahrenheit. That's almost boiling is 212. So it'll be pretty warm. So this is remember your kids boiled down a bunch of birch sap. Yep. And um, there is some finished syrup in the bottom of the pan if you wanted to try a little taste test. Oh, it's good. I like it. Yeah, it's different though, right? Like it it's reminds not... me of those Werther's candies. Oh, the yeah. caramelly, yeah. the caramelness. Yeah, and it's probably got a maybe a unique kind of a birch um, flavor as well. So I was going to do, uh, where's my moose meat? Moose meat in maple syrup, but it's going to end up being maple, maple, maple <laughs> birch syrup. Um, and then we're going to try out, we're going to use the... Uh, this new meat thermometer, instant read, uh, so we know when our what our internal temperature is on our moose meat. Um, are you gonna try some yes. moose meat? And I'm gonna like you're it because I know I like moose meat. You know why else you're gonna like it? Because it's cooked in maple sap, but also I brought some sea salt. Well, then I'll totally like it. And I brought some steak spice just in case. Yeah. And what else have I got? Gloves. New Super Sparrow water bottle. Um, and my safety kit. Well, the knife isn't for safety, but I've got my first aid kit, which I'm trying to bring around. Anytime I do chainsawing, it's got a uh, tourniquet in there and some trauma bandages and things like that. So let's, let's fire this up and cook some Moose meat. So what we need to do is fire it up. Okay, let's let's see what our temperature is. Almost 180. It's not not boiling temp yet. So this is the plan. We concocted this plan. We're gonna braise the meat until it's cooked. We're gonna take it out. We're gonna let the sap reduce until it's like syrup. Then we're gonna roll the meat around in that syrup, take it out, and then put some sea salt and a little bit of steak spice on it. Doesn't that sound good? Yeah, it does. Any guesses on temperature? 207. 207. Oh, you're so close. It's 208. So close. Oh. 207. <laughs> Did you just take it out a little bit? For no, it, I think it just depends on where it is in here. Because there's there was yeah. a hot spot over here. And then it's a little bit cooler over here. So, um, I think we can cook meat at that temperature. So let's throw our moose meat in there. Braised moose meat in maple and birch sap. Oh, that's a big, they're way thicker than I thought. Yeah, they're good chunks of moose. Yeah. And then we'll um, take them out and simmer it all down and glaze them. I like our plan. 
It's gonna be our meat flipper. Okay. What part of the moose is that from? I think it's from the blade. So it's part of the shoulder roast, but it was a boneless roast. And I cooked part of it in the slow cooker, but I cut off a couple pieces specifically to bring up here for this. I can smell it, it smells good already. Does it? Mm -hmm. What does it smell like? Um, beef. Yeah? Yeah. Like not chicken. Yeah. <laughs> smells like other meat. <laughs> not pork. Good. Yeah, I mean, really, as long as all the outside cooks, mm -hmm. then it should be fine. And then it's just how, how red this you is, like your steak. Um, this is nice and sharp, so it should oh, yeah. be pretty easy to get an internal. So it's like 82, oh. 81 inside Fahrenheit. It still has a ways to go. Well, that was lucky. They actually have the recommended temp in here because I don't always remember these numbers, but we're aiming for about 135 Fahrenheit to be medium rare to medium. We got to chatting and then we might have gone over. We're at like 150 Fahrenheit on that piece and 134, 135. So that one's also like your Rare to medium rare. Thanks, Chef Temp. So let's take these out. On the fancy plate. On our fancy plate. And then we're gonna simmer this down. It's gonna end up being kind of like a gravy syrup because there are some little meat bits in there. And I know you said salt after, but let's put a little bit of salt yeah, on Yeah, and I, like, I'm not sure that's the right call anyway, but it's too late now. Like, it might have been better to salt beforehand, I don't know. I'm gonna let it... You don't cook a lot of meat. Okay. So we're just gonna let this we don't have to simmer. It. It'll just go? Yeah, I think it'll just... I'm worried about cooling it down too much, so I actually am... Having some trouble, I don't know if the propane line is dirty, but it's not getting uh, as much propane and therefore not heating as quickly as it should be able to. It should be able to roar like a jet engine and it is not going past a, the low temperature. And I, I don't know why that is. There's no already made syrup. I guess it wouldn't be the same because it wouldn't have had the meat cooking in it. Um, well, I mean, I could I could dump this out and just get syrup out of the big evaporator. Yeah, but like this might be extra. Extra yummy. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It'll have it'll be a little bit more complex anyway. So I mean, this is going to take a few minutes. We'll just turn the camera off. We'll be right back. The pan's kind of foiling us, so we're going to warm these up again, turn them around a couple times. It did reduce, it is getting thicker, but I'm just not getting heat. Just not getting heat under the pan. So we're just gonna finish them like that and then we'll throw some uh, steak spice on. Maybe we'll try a bite without the steak yeah, spice and yeah. then maybe throw some on. All right, we have the steak spice if we want it, but let's which piece do you want? Um, like I'm gonna have a bite of one of the pieces. Okay. It was a little bit. So whichever piece you want. Too tall there. Take a bite of the other one. Oh, we're just gonna like gnaw off a big hunk of meat. There's no you utensils. Uh, what are utensils? <laughs> oh yeah, you're I right. have a knife. How's that? Perfect. Oh yeah, look at it. That's medium rare. We'll let YouTube be the judge of that. <laughs> you know that piece? Wait for you. I'm just gonna have You're a bite. Gonna, okay. Yeah. Hmm. It was very mapley. Hmm. On the outside. Hmm. And it is juicy. And yummy. Mm hmm. 
I didn't put enough salt on it and I am gonna steak spice it a little bit. They're right. Tea biscuits. They're buttermilk. Buttermilk biscuits. Buttermilk biscuits. I'm gonna dip them in the juices and then. Should be good. I uh, made them with honey, which was dumb. I should have made them with maple syrup. It's gonna be a, a clash of sugars. I know. This is yummy. Yeah, the steak spice is good on it. I would use sap for braising again, like haul some home in the kitchen, use mm -hmm. a slow cooker. This is fun to experiment up here though, while we're like doing some stuff and hanging out. I'm actually gonna have another. I'm going in for more. Do it. None for you, Scotty. Hmm. So I was also happy with this and um, did you hear that? It's magnetic. So you can stick it to your fridge. Or the side of your stove or whatever. So that's handy as well. I'm going to start taking it camping. And use it in my kitchen. Yeah, me too. Um, so I will I drop a link below for uh, that thermometer if you want to check it out. Um, it's been pretty handy in, in this test anyway. Mm. More meat. And we have cold drinks. Well, you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't put mine in that Did you run them over? No. My, they were pretty cold to start. Mm. Oh, I still cold. That's for later. I'm going to do some chainsawing first. Um, I would show you some, but I'm running out of battery. And I don't think you want to watch me just making a big racket anyway. But uh, check us out on our next adventure. So many. Mm hmm. Choo, choo, choo. You're not gonna try the biscuit on camera? Mm. Like what if it's gross? <laughs> the kids ate them, so they can't be gross. <laughs> Just soaking up some of that pan juice. Like, I wish I brought some butter. Yeah. But it's pretty sweet. Well, there's butter at your house, so. There's, it's um, I can taste the honey and the maple, I think. You can taste the honey. Well, the honey got crystallized, and so it didn't, I was supposed to drizzle it, and it ended up clumping. So mm. you might've got a honey pocket. little cooking success up here today. All right, we're gonna get back to work. See you on the next one. <laughs>